We've got some hey, this is Luis, and I'm Luis. You You're listening to the before. Content is One, Profit two, podcast. Three, we spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn more on how to turn that content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, guys. We have a special surpriser for you. Go now, contentisprofit.com. And today, hmm. ultra special guest, hmm. ultra special topic, of course, how to grow and scale your business and create massive momentum in your life. Sweet. Ooh. Can't wait to dive in. But Ooh. before that, Fonzi, do we have a sponsor today? Indeed we do. Say Thank what? you for asking. Oh, yes. Man. And today's sponsor is your own, The Biz Bros, Say right what? here with oh, Content man. Momentum. Yes. What is Content Momentum, you might be asking yourself. Well, if you have a long form piece of content, just like the one that you're listening right now, or watching, we can chop it up all for you, you know, into value-packed, bite-sized assets, so then you can turn it into little minions that go into social media and get clients for you. So Let's if that sounds like go. something that you want, hmm, slide into the DMs. That's we want to talk right, to you. Guys. At Beast Bros Co. on Instagram, on Facebook. We're ready for you. Sweet. Also, let me ask you a quick, quick favor. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button so you know when these episodes are dropping on your phone. That's right, guys. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Beast Bros Co. That's right. And if you find this episode impactful, which I am sure you will, well, yes, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Don't forget to share it and and leave a five-star review. Thank you. What a day. Today we have royalty in the house. And you might think we're exaggerating, but we are not. Today's guest is the one behind thousands of entrepreneur successes. And not, not only, not, not just any entrepreneurs. He has helped Steve Larson, Marley Jacks, and even the legend himself, Russell Branson. Hmm. I hope by this point, you already have your notepad out, ready to take notes, unless you're driving, of mm. course, mm. safety first, That's we know right. that. Yep. Anyway, yep. we have been chasing today's guest for a long time, mm -hmm. so big shout out to Marley Jax for making this happen. Thank you, Marley. A few months back, we had a call with one of today's guest team members, mm. and that single call change or business so needless to say we are extremely excited and grateful for him to come here and help all of us grow and scale our business today's guest is the co-founder and ceo of a multi-million dollar company he created cdpe which helped pull forward the recovery of the foreclosure crisis by five to seven years. Mind-blowing. He also created the entrepreneurial personality type, helping tens of thousands of entrepreneurs grow and scale six, seven, and eight-figure businesses. Absolutely epic. Let's just get this started, team. Please welcome host of Momentum Podcast, creator of the entrepreneurial personality type, and recipient of the Biz Bros Award mm -hmm. for Best Entrepreneurial Dad of All Times, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Alex Sharfin! <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. That was, uh, that was the most energy-packed intro I think I've ever gotten for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. We did, mission successful. Mission there we accomplished. Go. We, can, we, we, can, we can just end the episode right here. That's it. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. No, man, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Wow, Alex, it's it's an honor to have you, man. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, coming on live with the audience and uh, share some of your secrets. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I'm excited about this. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, should I go through your story a little bit? Because I feel like everybody listening right now probably knows or heard a little bit of you. But, you know, I, I am tempted to ask you, you know, Who's, who's Alex? How did this, like, this whole momentum thing started? And, you know, we can go deep if you want. You can just go the fast version. Whatever you want, man. <laughs> Sounds good. So, oh, man, what is Alex and how did the momentum thing get started? Or who is Alex? So, <laughs> you know, guys, I think the easiest thing is to just kind of give you a little bit of my background. Absolutely. I was born in Latin America, uh, Mexico City. Uh, moved to the United States when I was about six years old. So um, I was always different than the kids around me. I think I would have been different had I not lived in Mexico, no matter what. I just think I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm um, you know, we, we have this content, the, the three awakenings, the entrepreneurial personality type. And the yes. three things that let you know you're an entrepreneurial personality type are the first question is, when did you know you were different? Mm. And for me, 
that started as soon as I encountered people outside of my family. I knew I was different than the people around me. And so I had a hard time socially in school. I had a hard time with teachers in school. I wasn't that, um, I wasn't academically consistent. And so uh, I was a really different kid growing up. And as a result, yeah. uh, I didn't do what normal kids do or what most kids do. I wasn't really involved in sports. I didn't have a lot of friends. What I did was I, I read a ton, I researched a ton. Um, I was like that weird kid that stole books out of the library. No kidding. I really stole <laughs> books out of the library because if I had read them once, I wanted to read them again. Yeah. And as a kid, um, I started reading, you know, I, I was, I was so different that I started reading personal development books around 10 years old. Wow. Um, yeah, I've met some other people that do that, but not many, not many who have yeah. done that. And, uh, I remember I was about 10 years old. I was at a garage sale with my mom. That's where I got most of the stuff. That's when I was growing up. I thought garage sales were where you got clothes and stuff for your house and all that. I didn't really understand that you could go buy new stuff. I know that, that sounds crazy, but my entire childhood, everything I got was always used, and we yeah. we pretty much shopped at garage sales. And so we were at a garage sale, and there was a guy who was selling a box of um, personal development books, mm. and it said one hundred dollars on it. And I looked in it, and it had like. Wayne Dyer and Ooh. Tony Robbins and the original NLP tapes from Bander and Grindler. Not those weren't my favorite band. The the Wayne Dyer stuff was amazing. Yeah. The Tony Robbins stuff was pretty good too. And um, I was telling my mom like, "Hey, I, I need this box," which was such a dream. Yeah. Our budget for a weekend of garage selling was usually like ten to twenty dollars. My mom was paying like twenty five to fifty cents for stuff. So wow. to spend a hundred dollars on a box of books was never going to happen. Yeah. But as we walked around this garage sale, I was like pitching her on buying me the books <laughs> the whole time. And finally, the guy who was running the garage sale got up from behind the table, walked around, grabbed the box of books, walked over to me. He's like, "Kid, you need this more than anybody I've ever <laughs> met. If I give these to you, do you promise you'll read them and listen to them?" And I'm like absolutely i will start today yeah and he gave it to me and there was like audio tapes and books and it was amazing it was like this wow i'm getting goosebumps as i talk about it i went me home too and I, started, I started playing the wayne dyer tapes and yeah. it was called the awakened life and it was it's like the first time i've ever heard anybody that sounded like I felt. And it was incredible. It was like this, this validation all at once from this guy who I had no clue who he was. And I was listening to this audio um, series and it just like kept getting better and better and clearer and clearer. And I was 10. And then the next set of CDs he had was Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins. And I remember putting it in and listening to the story of Tony Robbins being like overweight in a 400 square foot bachelor apartment and, you know, not doing what he wanted to do and then being able to turn his life around. And it painted this picture of what was possible for me. Mm. And I, I, ever since then, that like opened this need for progress and for moving forward and for create, making things happen. And, you know, it wasn't for years later until I came up with the word momentum. You know, I, I, I saw it one day and I'm like, that's it. That's, that's what it's all about. That's literally what it's all about. Not kind of, not part of it, not sort of. My entire life is about momentum. I want to be in forward progress, making things happen, changing things, you know, the world falling in my wake. And so uh, as, I, as I grew older, I started focusing on like, how, how do you create momentum? How do you move forward? What are the process, the structure, the routine that gets consistent results? How do you uh, overcome the challenges that are around you? And so I think most of my life has been that pursuit. And um, you guys have the entrepreneurial personality type book in front of you. I keep one on my desk too. And what eventually happened was through research, here's what happened. I loved those initial personal development tapes. Really mm -hmm. the one that I, the, the set that I spent the most time with was, was Wayne Dyer's Awaken Life. I mean, I, Wayne Dyer, one of my favorite people of all time, really amazing human being who I actually had a, a chance to meet before he passed away. Mm. But here's what happened with the other stuff. I started listening to personal development. Guys, I don't know this, if this has ever happened to you. Have you ever listened to like a personal development book or CD or, or a tape set and then you pick up another one and it argues with the last one and then you pick up another one and it invalidates the previous two and then you keep going and like Absolutely. they all start arguing with each other? Yes. Like personal development is not a very on um, conflict free place, <laughs> yeah. you know, like you read one book and it's like, write down all your goals, tell everybody around them, get as much leverage as you can. Then the next book is like, do not write down your goals. Don't tell anybody, <laughs> keep them in journal. you know, it's like, Whoa, what's happening here? Yeah. Yeah. And, and as a kid, I couldn't deal with that. And so Ooh. what I did was I, I, I transferred and I, and I started researching people. 
I started reading about people, even as a young kid. I, I remember one of the first biographies I, I got my hands on was Edgar Allan Poe because I had read his, his books and I wanted to know about the person. And it was crazy. Here was this wildly successful author that everybody in the world knew who had a really challenging life. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I started reading about Albert Einstein and I'm like, whoa, really successful physicist and then philosopher who had a really challenging life, like failed algebra, could never tie his shoes. And I kept doing that, like Socrates, incredible. Like here's a guy who laid out modern human thinking hmm. and and died because he wouldn't, admit, he wouldn't tell everybody they were right and he was wrong. He walked into the middle of the field and drank poison. So I kept reading about these humans that like Harriet Tubman, like a slave, horrible hmm. life, like beat up, left for dead over and over again went on to build the Underground Railroad and help thousands of people escape slavery. And I kept seeing this, this like commonality that people who have a really challenging, really incredibly hard, really difficult life went on to change things. And when I wrote The Entrepreneurial Personality Type, it was like everything coalesced into one thing. And what I realized was, you know, today society has this equation. If you don't look like everyone else, sound like everyone else, show up like everybody else and read and, and write and talk like everybody else, then we need to fix you. We need to diagnose you. We need to prescribe something and, and make all that go away. And the reality is, if you look throughout history, the people who didn't show up like everyone else, talk like everyone else, walk like everyone else, read, write, and talk like everybody else are exactly the people who went on to change the world. Yeah. And so that's where all of that came from. And that's where the entrepreneurial personality type came from originally. Wow. Beautiful. Th by the way, thank you so much uh, you know, sharing that story. We just got goosebumps, so like we goosebumps. Like, I can't even say it of how excited. <laughs> but you know you, you got the goosebumps on your, on your tongue. Oh my tongue. <laughs> but I, 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 it's it's I think it's it's so refreshing to listen to this because yeah. uh, you know, we can't and like we we've felt that way too in many, many occasions. Uh, especially, you know, we're being being immigrants. We've been in the States for about ten years. The second we landed in this country, we felt like we'd never, we, we didn't fit, right? And then, you know, you start implementing and you have, you meet these awesome people and you start learning and then creating uh, or joining an, an, an environment, right? And, uh, and it's incredible through your story that your environment at first were those tapes and you're like, man, let me grab onto this and I move forward with everything that I got because it can be possible. So thank you so much for sharing that powerful story. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to add something a little bit here because... You know, I, I'm a believer that things happen for, for a reason, right? Oh. And when I first got here to the States, it was 2011. I came on my own to, you know, go to college, play soccer. And my mom gave me one book. She's like, here, this is the, the book I want you to have, right? And, and read. And I was like, okay, mom, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. And the book was a Wayne Dyer book. Uh, your, <laughs> your, your erroneous zones, right? And it's crazy because... I've, I've read that book multiple times now. It's absolutely, I, I love it. And the other day I actually connected with this lady. She's an author and we started talking and she said she also met Wayne Dyer. They were close friends. And I was like, that's insane, right? So I see that I'm, I was nervous coming into this interview, right? I'm like, oh, it's Alex Charfin, right? I was like, whoa, this is going to be so cool. And now you tell me this and I'm like, This is happening for a reason, right? Like th there is a reason in here. I mean, besides obviously sharing your message and inspiring lo lots of people and helping them. I'm like, there is a reason here, right? And the fact that you brought Wayne Dyer right from the beginning, because I've never heard that story from you. I I'm being honest. Uh, in all the podcasts that I've been, I, uh, that I've listened from you, yeah. I haven't heard that story. And now that you mention it, I'm like, Wow, I can't believe it. So thank let me, you so let me much. Let me ask you a question. Is this an exclusive story? Because we have a surprise <laughs> if this is an exclusive story. I don't know if it's an exclusive story, but if I told you about how I met Wayne Dyer, I don't think I've ever shared that on a podcast. <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Mar Marley knows what we're talking about. <laughs> okay, so, so, uh, so here's how I met Wayne Dyer. This is really crazy. Mm. By the way, this is also a story of how circular the world is, like how yeah, if you yeah. open an equation, it will come back to you and how like things just, they everything really does happen for a reason. So when I was a kid, one of the most influential things on me was that tape set, The Awakened Life by Wayne Dyer. I listened to it so many times that I could stop it and then I would walk around the house and it would play in my head without me even listening to him. Wow. Uh, yeah. At one point, there were magnetic tapes. I really, I actually wore one out. I didn't think you really could wear out tapes, but I did. Mm. And so... Fast forward to, I don't know, 20 something years later, um, my wife and I were living in Boca Raton, Florida. 
And it, this was at a time where I was doing hot Bikram yoga every day. I committed to doing it every day for a year, which man, about four weeks into that commitment, I'm like, what was I thinking? But I, but I made it. I, did, I didn't do 365 days. I did 362 days, but I did like seven or eight days where I did it twice. Yeah. So anyway, I, I did it more than 365 it's worth it. days. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, did so it. I made it. <laughs> so, and by, just so that you understand kind of context, by this point, you know, I probably had given away maybe 500 copies of The Power of Intention. We used to give it to our to our clients. I used to give it to friends of mine. That that book absolutely changed my life. Yeah. And, and so much of Wayne's work did. And so Katie and I are living in Boca and there's this massive hurricane, like huge. And we lived in, we, were, we weren't in Boca at the time. We were actually in a place called Lighthouse Point, which is right on the border of Boca. Yeah. But we were out on the water. And so... We had a house on a canal, our boat sunk, those canal water went over the side, all the, the electricity went down. We weren't gonna have electricity for three weeks. So we had to go to Orlando and we went and stayed in Orlando. And so the next morning, we were like driving up there, tons of traffic, took us 11 hours to get up there, it was horrible. The next morning I'm like, gotta go to Bikram Yoga. And my wife's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I haven't missed a day, I'm not gonna miss a day. Yeah. And so we find a, a yoga studio in Orlando and we go over and I take this Bikram yoga class and it was brutal. For some reason, the studio, studio was hotter than my studio. I was like irritable. I didn't want to be doing it. Yeah. And we finish and I go into the locker room and Bikram's like the type of thing you have to change your clothes because they're soaked. So I go in, I'm changing and I hear this voice from behind me, like talking to someone else. And he says, well, I'm an author and I speaker, you know, and I, I, uh, I help people understand their lives. And I'm like, <laughs> Ooh, that's Wayne Dyer. And I turned around and it was Wayne Dyer. And I'm like, oh my God, it's Wayne Dyer. What am I going to say to Wayne Dyer? Oh Jesus, it's Wayne Dyer. And I turn around and I'm like, you're Wayne Dyer. And he's like, yeah, Alex, how you doing? And I'm like, what? <laughs> how did you know my name? And he's like, and I'm like, e e e yeah, hi. Uh, how do you, what? And he's like, he starts laughing. And he goes, we take yoga together in Boca Raton. I've been in your class for the last four weeks. You're usually in the front row right next to Cheryl. I'm usually in the back. I'm a little older. I don't like people to watch me. I'm like, <laughs> what? You've been in my class for three weeks? Like I didn't wow. even notice. And so we ended up talking for a second and not for a second. We ended up talking for like 15 or 20 minutes. We walked outside and I was telling him about the tape set. I was telling him, like I was giving him details about how he had changed my life, which book it was, when I used it, how impactful it had been. Yeah. And he's like, you know what? I have to leave, but why don't you and your wife come by this event I'm doing at the, the convention center tomorrow? If you come over there around noon, I'm speaking and we would love to have you join us. And I'm like, awesome. Oh. So he leaves. And I'm like, Katie, isn't that amazing? So we're driving to the hotel and Katie's like, are we just gonna go to the convention center and ask for Wayne Dyer? Like, what are we gonna do? We don't even know where he's speaking or what he's doing or what's happening. So then, so, and I'm like, yes, we are going to do that. So the next day we go to the Orlando convention center. It's like one of the biggest convention centers in the world. And we walk in and we like find somebody with the uniform and said, uh, is Wayne Dyer speaking here today? And they're like, yes, he's over this way. And he was like a yeah, 12 football fields away in the convention center. We go find the room. We're about 20 minutes before he speaks. And I'm like, I have no idea what to do. So I walked up and I said, hey, is there anybody here who actually works with Wayne Dyer? Not the event, but with Wayne Dyer. And they yeah. said, yeah, look, give me a second. They found this woman with a clipboard. And I walk up and as I'm walking up to her, I'm like, what am I gonna say? <laughs> so I'm like, transparency always wins. Hi, I was in a yoga class yesterday and with Wayne. And he told us, to and I actually think I said, Mr. Dyer. I was like, with Mr. Mr. Dyer, Dyer. And, or with Dr. Dyer. And I said, uh, he told us to come here at around noon, that it would be really nice to have us here. I don't know what to do next. And she's like, oh, great. This happens all the time. Follow me. <laughs> and so we got in behind her, followed her. She walked us into the auditorium where he was speaking. There was probably 5,000 seats in it, wow. right up to the front row, right on the center aisle, and sat Katie and I in the front row on the center aisle. Huh. And then after we sit down, his family came in and sat next to us. <laughs> And so then we're sitting there with Wayne Dyer's family. I'm like, this is not real. This can't be real. Wayne comes out and starts talking. And he, or first, first he had this woman. Oh man, I'm not gonna remember her name. I think it was in Marguli. This black woman who survived the, the uh, massacres in Africa. It was incredible listening wow. to her. Mm. And then Wayne Dyer comes out and he starts speaking and he's barefoot, of course. And he's like walking around on the stage yeah. and you can hear a pin drop because it was, when he's talking, nobody makes noise. And at one point during his speech, he looks down at the front row and he goes, oh, so glad you could make it. And he just kept going. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Wayne Dyer just talked to us from the stage. And then... <laughs> The, we, by the way, at this point, we haven't paid anything. We haven't done anything. We're just like along for the ride. Yeah. And so then the event ends 
And as it's ending, we stand up and I was like, that was amazing. I mean, I like I'm kind of getting emotional about it right now. I remember Wayne talking about a friend of his who had passed away and this butterfly who came and visited him and talked to him. And it was just this incredible story. And as we're getting up to leave, one of the people who was working with Wayne came up to us and said, hey, can you just hang out for a little bit? Wayne would like to talk to you. And then the whole auditorium cleared out and all of the speakers came out, including uh, Wayne's daughter, Sky. And we hung out for like an hour, just standing there Ooh, wow. talking and like figuring, you know, answering questions, who was who and what happened and how did you get here? It was incredible. Mm. So like all the energy in my life that I put towards Wayne Dyer, I believe created this moment of magnetism where we yes. connected and had this incredible experience with him. And here's what, here's what's. Oh no. Oh, oh, it got froze. What happened? We got oh. Alex, this is so oh. good. Oh man. It was so good. The internet was like, I'll give you guys a little break. Oh no. Let's say, hold on. All right, guys, all thank done. you so much for those tuning in. Let's see, having trouble. Ah, oh, unstable internet connection. Oh, beautiful. We're, Sweet. Wait, ding, ding. wait, we're going to have to wait here a second because wow. we uh, were way into that story. Just, that was so exciting. Just so you guys know, I mean, this is the power of storytelling. Uh, it ha I'm like having the chills right now because he just. I mean, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's okay. We'll Man, see. We'll I'm, see what happens. I'm Let's so see what sad happens. this happened right now. Ding, 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 ding. Guys, if you are listening to this right now, he mentioned so, he mentioned a few things that I I'm gonna bring back when we when we get him on board here. But he says transparency always wins, right? That is 120 true. Oh, I think we're about to get him back. Oh, and uh, let's see. And we're back. Alex, can you hear us? Right. Oh, <laughs> it got cut back, guys. It, it got <laughs> cut off like right at the perfect moment, you know? I was like, no. Oh, no. What was I about to say? It's so good. So so here's a funny story. You know, one of her staff members, uh, she believes in, uh, you know. Um, Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde. 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 Oh, yeah. Is that how you say Something it? Like so that. she warned us today. She's like, guys, <laughs> make sure that you have everything, you know, lined up because with Mercury ret retrograde. Is that how you say I, it I think in so. English? Okay. She's like, things are going to happen. So we yeah. literally like prepared everything, but still happened. But it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. So Alex, <laughs> you were right after you guys stayed for an hour talking. You were saying, and you know what? And then right there, it cut off. It cut so, off it, at the perfect hook. Okay, got it. So here's here. So so here's what's crazy is that Wayne Dyer was kind of the foundation of my spiritual belief system growing up, and mm. and became even a stronger foundation of the spiritual belief system before I met him. But then when I met him, here's what's amazing. So I as a, as an entrepreneur, as a speaker, you know, I've been able to meet a lot of my heroes, a lot, and. In fact, there was a time where I would have a bookshelf full of people that I didn't know. And now I have a bookshelf full of people that like I can text and call. And, wow. you know, I, I know most of the people who kind of write best selling books and a lot of stuff in our space. They're they're friends of mine. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, in some cases, I wish I hadn't met my heroes. They, they were a huge letdown and they kind of changed how I look at the content that I learned from them. And I had a really hard time adjusting to it. Wow. And in some cases, I even felt a little like taken advantage of. With meeting Wayne Dyer, it was so the opposite experience. I wow. met him and he was everything I ever wanted him to be. And, and he was like, he was actually better than I ever anticipated it would be to meet him in real life. And so he's just one of those human beings that I think has changed tens of millions of people's lives. And there's a reason he was yeah. congruent. He was real. He lived transparently. And it was just an incredible experience getting to meet him. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing this story. This is so good. Wow. And, and please, like for those listening and watching right now, let this be a lesson because, you know, we talk with a lot of people starting to create content, start to put their, your, their message out there. Let this be uh, an example on, you know, how to act not only in your content, but also outside of it, right? Like you got to be even bigger person outside of it when you meet somebody. And, and I think that's such a valuable lesson because, you know, we come from the brick and mortar, right? And, and we always, you know, back then, a few years back, whenever you're recording that video and you're putting your best self and I'm doing air quotes right now for that video, but then the customer comes in and the staff is not ready or the staff is not up to that standard, right? To serve that client. And sometimes I feel like just like you, Alex, like we've seen behind the scenes of some of the businesses that either we help to, or like we, we work with and, uh, and there's a lot, you know, a, a lot there that can be done. So this story, I think uh, for me, that was like the moral of that story is like, Hey, you know, uh, 
if you are being yourself in front of the camera, please be yourself or more or better whenever people meet you in person. So it's it's incredible. I love the engagement here. Guys, there's everybody saying, hey, what's up, <laughs> go? Hey, say, hello, Alex. A big hug from Venezuela. There's a question for you, Alex. Let's see. You know, who are your top three personal development, development mentors? Oh, man. Top three personal <laughs> development mentors. Um, okay, so I'm a little old school. Uh, you know, I, Make I it think happen. I'm a, I'm a business person. And Love so it. for me, personal development is business development. The more that I learn about business, the more I feel like I develop personally. I have an entire shelf up here of Peter Drucker's books. Mm -hmm. And if I had to name a number one in my entire life, it's Peter Drucker. Like Drucker, he figured out business and then he figured out life and then he figured out philosophy. And it's amazing to read his books and watch the evolution of his thinking and just how much more how much more be compelling it became. And then if, I, I, number two has to be Wayne Dyer. There's, I don't think anybody else could occupy yeah. that space. Love it. And then as far as personal development, I'm like, I'm thinking who could it be? I don't know, you know, probably Napoleon Hill. Ooh, probably, so good. unless, unless it was um, the guy who wrote The Goal, Eli, and I can never say his last name, but there's a book called The Goal. And uh, I think it was Eli, I can't remember. You can look it up. Well, but yeah, it was, we'll look it up. It, how do you say his last name? I have no idea. We'll look it up, I guess. Fonzie, yeah, we'll, we'll right check here. it out. So, uh, hang on. I'll look it up. It's, I, it's, uh, it's an amazing book. Um, it's by Eli Goldratt. And Goldratt. so mm. probably those four, but, but Peter Drucker, if you haven't read a Drucker book or an article or something from him, you should go read Peter Drucker. That's our homework for the next month, Fonzie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, everything <laughs> right now that you're yeah. mentioning that this is, has been influential and life-changing I'm like ordering it right now, you know, <laughs> that, that done after this, we're going to go shopping. We're letting everybody yes. know. And there's something I want to relate to the story that you were mentioning before with uh, Wayne Dyer. I found extremely interesting. First, transparency always wins. You said that phrase. And I mean, I think that relates to what my brother was just talking about, right? Like transparency in front and when you are behind cameras as well. And the next thing that I wanted to relate is And you mentioned it right at the end, and I want people to catch this, that you said the energy that you were putting before, right, um, in all these Wayne Dyer teachings, it led you to that moment, right? You, you, I personally think that you manifested that moment that happened in your life, right? And I think it talks about that obsession, right, about the entrepreneurs that, that you want something and you're going to go get it no matter what. And I think that's a cool transition into the, the EPT, right? The entrepreneurial yeah. personality type, because again, a lot of people might feel guilty sometimes of having that obsession and maybe not caring <laughs> about some other stuff. And for those that don't know what the entrepreneurial personality type is, first go buy his book because it. it's absolutely amazing. Or you can <laughs> actually get it for free if Ooh. you sign up to the content, the Momentum Masterclass that starts tomorrow. Oh so yeah! I encourage everybody to do that. But Alex, can you share a little bit more about the, the EPT, what it is? And I'm su actually super curious to know, how did you get to that? Because you created the EPT. Yeah. So, um, well, it, it's kind of it's a continuation of the story I was telling you before. You know, as a, as a kid and as I got older, I started studying successful people. And here's what happens. If you read one biography or a third party account or a story of somebody's life, and then you read another one and another one, when you get to about 10, they all look completely different. It's like haphazard and, and weird and different. Mm -hmm. But here's, here's what happens. If you start reading about a lot of successful people and you get to hundreds and maybe thousands and, and you just keep going, you start seeing patterns. Like I started seeing these clear patterns. Like as an example, you guys just said something about being obsessed and how, you know, the world doesn't want to see that level of obsession. Well, here's what I can tell you from reading about successful people throughout history of setting equal success and it doesn't work any other way. Mm. So whenever something in the world tells an entrepreneur that they're too obsessed or they work too hard or they need to go be social or they're not acting or behaving in the right way, I just want to tell them to get the heck out of the room because you tell me yes. right now, uh, Thomas Edison, 10,000 tries to make a light bulb. That's obsession. That's an over the top obsession. And after 10,000 tries to make a light bulb, like, you know, what would happen today to Thomas Edison? We would call him, call him obsessive compulsive disorder and give him Wellbutrin. And we would all be sitting here in the dark. The reality is, is that throughout history, successful people have had the same qualities, the same attributes, the same conditions. And the more that I read about it, the more, here's what happened. At the beginning, it felt like everything was different. Mm. 
But as I read about more and more people, by the time I got done, it felt like everything was exactly the same. Like every single life followed the same pattern. There's this period of discomfort of understanding who you are. Then there's a period of figuring out what your place is and and really self propulsion, like getting that innate motivation where you just want to go forward. Then there's a period of figuring it out and getting the help you need. Then there's a period of overcoming everything that's happening to you and making your contribution in the world. And then the light bulb actually turns on and you're known for what you were pursuing, like Thomas Edison, or you finally put the, the, the right information out there like Albert Einstein, or, or you, you, you become a human being who can change the world for people with different abilities, yeah. even though you can't see, talk, or hear like Helen Keller did. Like that is the commonality with, with successful people. And what I always tell people who are like me, who are entrepreneurial personality types, is that we need to look at the world completely different than everybody else does. Absolutely. Because the, the way we are hardwired is different than everyone else. And here's what I know about people like the two of you and me, that, that someone like us, it doesn't matter what disease or disability or challenge or frustration or irritation or anxiety you're going through right now, it doesn't matter. Someone just like us has gone through it overcome it and gone on to change the world and we have to hold that belief true that we can do the same thing and so that's where this book came from and guys the the weekend that i wrote down to write this i was really writing an introduction to another (laughs) book i was writing and talking about my market and i couldn't do it i had 300 words to describe entrepreneurs and everything i wrote felt completely insignificant yeah so finally i i removed the 300 word count i was like katie i'm gonna go write this description i'll be back I came into my office, I wrote almost 25,000 words that weekend, Ooh. and it became the entrepreneurial personality type. Yeah, it was. Wow. I'm, so not, very, I'm, not, I'm not a religious person. Um, yeah. I don't believe in a set doctrine, but that weekend was as close to a religious experience as I've ever yeah. had. I mean, it, it was like words came through me, not from me. And as I wrote on the paper, I can't tell you how often I could barely see it because I was crying because the words in this book are confirmation for entrepreneurs around the world but the person who first got to read them was me and it completely changed my life yeah wow. absolutely wow uh man like I, where are the tissues fancy because like this is getting yeah. like alex thank you again like this is incredible just i and again like it's because we are part of like this personality type right like while we were growing up we've been sharing this story in the field few episodes like few interviews that we've had where people ask like where did that start and i remember like from very little like very small age like our dad was a guy that would walk the entire weekend or still is a guy (laughs) hopefully he's changing now but you know uh, on but he'll walk the entire weekend wait wait, disclaimer we love our dad this we, we, we love, love that very much. He, he knows. <laughs> he knows we share this story. <laughs> yes, but uh, we, he will walk the entire weekend to find a pair of shoes that was maybe like two dollars, like cheaper than the one that we saw the first day of the weekend. And you know, for the longest time, we grew up with like, hey, you know, there's even though we had everything, like we we never. We, we had great opportunities, but on the money side of things was always like, hey, you know, my dad was always like, save it, save it. Like, it's going to be really challenging. It's like this. And, and uh, you know, he was incredible supporting our soccer, like, journey. But on the money side, we were always trying to figure out with solutions yeah. on how to, how to get money to get what we wanted, right? Whatever that was. And I remember going out and we will go to this market and we will buy these soccer jerseys for, like, 10 bucks. And then we'll go to our school and upsell it for, like, 50, right? And then we'll burn these CDs. And then when we came to the States, we're like, hey, can we make t-shirts and we actually started a t-shirt company which is what Fonz is wearing right now in the mm-hmm. Florida heat 90 degree weather and we're like always trying to figure these things out and I and I remember like friends from from college even my wife now right she's like man like why why do you do that thing like you don't need to do that thing but it was something like inside of us and you know as you share these stories the fire like lights up like inside of us as well because it's like I don't know where it came from but it's like how can I help people how can I impact people in a positive way through college we created this book called masslife.co which was everything about positive news like cool things and we created an event and uh, you know the blog like is transitioning into a hispanic show like very very soon because of the podcast but it, it like is always that fire and i feel like there's so many people out there with that same fire and especially now wanting to publish you know like we do i'm looking for this inspiration so first of thank you second go to you know momentummasterclass.com uh check it out because we'll be there for sure so come hang out and uh and i think like everybody needs to identify like if you feel in that way go get the book because it's gonna give you a massive clarity and it's gonna point you in the right direction yeah and you know while i was reading the book 
there, there's a reference that there are two athletes, right? And we always tell the story. We grew up playing soccer. We were obsessed with soccer. That's all we wanted to do, right? Mm. And when we didn't make it professionally, that's when the question hit and we're like, okay, what are we going to do now, right? And, and we feel like those abilities have translated or part of our um, athlete personality has translated into our business. And I'm very curious because while I was reading this, I started asking myself, right? I'm like, I wonder, are EPTs born or can they, can someone transform into an EPT? Well, let me give you a little background on that and maybe some insight into why you have some of this drive and feeling. See, when I look at the evolutionary, or sorry, when I look at the entrepreneurial personality type, I see that there are completely different types of people in the world and entrepreneurs are just fundamentally different. You know, there's so many different reasons that we're different, but one of them is we live in the future. You know, as entrepreneurs, we get up every morning, we travel into the future, create a new reality, come back to the present, demand it becomes real. The rest of the world does not do that like we do. They get up in the morning and they do what they need to do in the day. You know, they're, they're, they've got the stuff laid out for them that they're going to do that day. So most people don't respond to the world like we do. And the reason that I think so many people like us end up running businesses and doing new things and going out there and trying new things is because we have a hard time doing things like everybody else. And mm -hmm. the reason is... I think the entrepreneurial personality type evolutionarily is the evolutionary hunter. If we went back 10 year, 10,000 years ago, the three of us would have sticks and rocks and we'd have a bunch of people around us and we would get up every morning. We'd go out and take all the risk and, and challenge. Sorry, I don't know why I always get emotional when I talk about this. It's like I can picture it in my head. I can feel it. Yeah, I know that's who I am. I've been on the hunt my whole life. I've been searching for something my whole life. And when I look at it, whether you believe in intelligent design or you are religious or whatever it is, the way I see it, there is a percentage of the population that is programmed every day to get up and demand that the human tribe stays alive. We feel this drive and motivation to do things that we can't turn off, whether it's athletics, whether it's business, it's moving forward and making things happen. There's a reason why so many of, of my successful members are ex either amateur or pro athletes. It's because we're in momentum. We need to be doing something. The way I define the entrepreneurial personality type is we are physiologically sensitive, momentum-based beings that are highly reactive to constraint. That is who we are. Wow, that's amazing, Alex. Uh, that, that's you, Fonzie. <laughs> highly reactive to constraint. <laughs> yes, yeah. indeed, yes. 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 <laughs> that, that's, that's true. Um, you, you know, first I want to thank you for the passion that you show when you talk about this, right? Like you say, you feel it. And I want to share this story with you. Uh, I've shared it before in the podcast, but when we went to Steve Larson's event, Offer Mind, right? About you're in my mind again. It's like a fourth episode in a row. You do this, <laughs> like with brothers. Uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, good. It was like a year ago. <laughs> Sorry, I, what happened, Alex? I said it's like you have the same name or something. Exactly. Yeah, right? yeah that too. <laughs> Who would have imagined? <laughs> Who would have imagined? Um, so I was at Offer Mind, and I remember it was an incredible event. We made the biggest investment that we've made in our life in that event. But what struck me the most, right, what, what marked me the most that day was at the end of the event, everybody was, you know, standing ovation to Steve. He was on stage and I saw Steve and I saw his, like, the look on his face. And he was so proud. I could tell he was so proud of what he has been doing, right? And that all the effort that he has been doing led him to that day mm. where I think it has been the day where he has had the biggest sale in his business, but that translates into probably the biggest impact, right? That he has done through his business. And I saw him and I was like, wow, that's how I want to feel like mm. right there. Like that's the feeling I'm after. Right. And now I see you <laughs> talking about, you know, what you are extremely passionate. Well, better. Let me rephrase that about what you're obsessed about. Right. And I am like, That's how I want to feel where, where, yeah. how, when I share my <laughs> message, like exactly like yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm curious because, again, mm. we started developing our message when we started publishing. We, we knew we had to get ourselves in front of the camera, in front of a mic and start talking because, you know, we hear Russell Bronson and, and Steve Larson all the time say, you got to publish, you got to publish. And we were afraid at first, right? And, but then we started doing it. And the more we started sharing our message, I feel like the, the closer we get to that message that we truly identify with that want to share with people. But, you know, how for people that maybe are starting 
or they still don't know. They haven't found that thing that makes them obsessed. Um, what would be your recommendation for them? What should they do, right, to, to find that one thing? So I'm, I'm going to give you an answer that might be different than a lot of people give these days about this question. Can you guys hear me? Because it looks like we're frozen. We got you. Oh, no, we got you. We, we got, got you. Perfect. you. Okay, good. So I'm going to give you an answer that I think is a little bit different. So here's, here's the issue that I think happens in business a lot today is that people decide they want to go into business and then they do, try and go find a business they want to run. And they try and find the thing they want to do. And I just don't look at it that way. If you want to go into business, find a group of people you want to help. Become obsessed around a group of human beings that are like you, that are different than you, that or not, not sorry, not, not different than you, that are like you, that are different than the rest of the world, that need help, that need support. Find a group of people that are experiencing pain and frustration and irritation and go and help them. You know, we've talked a lot about Russell Brunson. I've known Russell for, I don't know, over 10 years and since before ClickFunnels. And, mm -hmm. uh, You know, Russell was so obsessed before ClickFunnels. He came out with a new product or a new event like every six to 12 months. Every, anybody who knew Russell, when he was like, hey, I got this new thing, we were like, yeah, we know. You always do. Uh, you know, I went through a period like that too. And, and then he was obsessed. He was obsessed with yeah. helping like this entry stage online entrepreneur get into this new economy and figure things out. You know, today people look at ClickFunnels and the avatar is so broad. There's so many different types of companies, brick and mortar and online and coaching and education all across the board. People are using ClickFunnels. It started out by Russell trying to help a person that was a lot like him, almost exactly like him. What did Russell do in his early days? He was an online marketer. What did he do with ClickFunnels? Figured out how to help online marketers do things more successfully because they were in pain. And I think that's the key for entrepreneurs to start a business. We have this, this concept called the client-centric mission. Mm -hmm. Every business we work with writes out their client-centric mission. They answer four questions. Who are you going to help? How are you going to help them? What's the change you're going to make? And how will you know you're successful? That should drive everything you do in a business. For us, I'll share mine with you. Or how are you going to help it? We help visionary entrepreneurs who can't turn it off and want to make a contribution just as much as they want to make a living. We help them by showing them the process, structure, and, and frameworks that help them consistently grow a business, build a team, and get the help they need. Mm -hmm. The change we want to make is that visionary entrepreneurs grow businesses, get the help they need, stop feeling like they need to do it all themselves, and can make themselves successful. And we will know we are successful when visionaries around the world are changing the world through using our systems and structure, and they're making their greatest contribution. See, it's all about them, not me. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you have a business, that you, you decide you want to have a business and you're not solving someone's pain, all you can focus on is the business. When you go out and find a population that needs help and you obsess around those people and you ask them what they need and you figure out what's going on and you give them those solutions, you will have a movement that changes the world. Wow. Uh, that reminds, okay. Yeah. Gong moment. The Gong first moment. Before that, so, yes. So we don't call them golden nuggets, Alex. We call them golden, golden boulders because they are... <laughs> They're massive, massive, you know, <laughs> and wow, they, there's actually a post-it that I have on my desk and I'm, I'm going to tell you in a second what that post-it says, but it came to be actually because I was listening to one of Josh 40 episodes when we started working with him, he brought this guy, I don't remember his name right now, but he's a incredible salesman. Um, he's from, from England and he was talking, right? And he was talking about kind of like finding your purpose. And he says, most people, I think he aligned perfect with you in what you just said. He says, most people. Phil Jones. Uh, yes, Phil Jones. Um, he said, most people are always trying to find, you know, what can I do? Mm. But instead, he said, he invited us to ask yourself, who am I for? And I was like, wow. Mm. And I wrote it down in the post-it. I put it in my desk. I have it right there. And I'm like, who am I for? And. I personally think it is a, a difficult question to answer sometimes, especially if, I don't know, if we're in this space of st still trying to discover <laughs> everything, you know, around our life, especially, you know, I share with you how we felt like we lost our identity when we, we our opportunity with soccer was over, right? We started yeah. finding this new identity, if you want to call it that way. And... And four I mean, years, it, four years later, you know, I think we we have it not dialed down, but it's yes. like it's solid. Exactly. But it was four years later. It was four years of like exploring this yeah. like thing, right? Yeah, exactly. And what you just say, right? It goes back to helping that person that is walking your own path. And I think that's what I've been realizing in the past 
month, like the past couple months, the more we share her message and the more we talk to people, I'm like, wow, when I get the most excited is when I realize I'm help, helping someone that, you know, is walking that path that I, that I already walked. And we use yeah. the, the analogy of, uh, and I always get the name wrong. So is that <laughs> the, the truck that sends the snow to the side? How do the you call snow that? Plow. The snow plow? Yeah, is the, that it? Okay. Snow plow. So, and we're like, we're like a snow plow, right? You're like clearing the road for all the cars that are coming behind you. So thank you so much for, yeah. for, for sharing that. What, you have a question? I do. All right, because, yeah. Can you let me talk? Yeah, yeah, okay, yes, we're good. Can, can go. At least that's <laughs> a weird dynamic of having your brother run the podcast with you. That's okay. No, it's fine. We're used to it. Uh, we're, we're coming out in an hour, in an hour here. We're going to have to do part two at some point, Alex. So I'm just going to extend the invitation out there uh, at some point, maybe episode 200, which is fine. Um, but it has to be an iconic. Yeah, I- iconic. Oh, I will come back. I will definitely come back. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Awesome. Uh, okay. So here's my favorite question of the day. You know, and uh, you know, uh, well, I wanted to ask why momentum, but we're going to leave that one for part two, you know, hook in there. Uh, and, or they can go to momentummasterclass.com bam, bam, and bam. sign up for the challenge. Okay, good. <laughs> So here's, we, we know that you publish a ton. Alex, your podcast has been a massive, not only inspiration, but help. Like we were going through a very, very tough moment uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, even before COVID happened. And that podcast was what like pushed us through to have a call with one of your team members, Jeremy, big shout out. By yeah, the way, we, we call some of our system, the Jeremy system, uh, <laughs> just so you know. So, you know, you can give him the thank you. But uh, obviously the, the podcast and all your content has helped, you know, thousands of entrepreneurs. And uh, my favorite question here is like, where will you be if you did not publish? Oh, man, I, I don't even know. I don't even know how to answer that. I've been publishing my whole career, my whole career. You know, I, I go back to even when I was in my 20s as a consultant, mm -hmm. I didn't publish like I do now because the same vehicles weren't there. But I published in Latin American magazines. I was uh, I did as much press as I possibly could. Um, <laughs> and George Bryan says everyone wants to, wants to do jump part two with Alex Sharp and George and I are friends. We did an amazing podcast together. It's gotten a ton of feedback, but it's awesome. Um, yeah. You know what? I, I, I mean, in the business I'm in of, of, you know, helping and influencing people and helping them move their businesses forward. I don't know that it's possible without publishing. Mm. Here's why, you know, we, we, in our business, we work with people who've, who've kind of been there. We're not working with opportunity seekers. Rarely does somebody say, this is the first thing I've ever bought. In fact, most of the time when we're talking to somebody, they've spent 10,000, 50,000, a hundred thousand. We've even heard like 350,000 on classes and courses and masterminds and all this stuff. And so for us, here's why publishing is so crucially important. We actually have to build trust before we get on a call with somebody. We have to build trust before they even think about buying something from us because there's so many people in our space that don't really, you know, I call them the 90 tenors, the people who put 90% of their time on marketing and less than 10% of the time on delivery and actually having a customer effect. But a lot of people assume you're like that until you prove otherwise. Yeah. So the reason that we have the podcast and all the videos I do and all the publishing we do. I, I, I remember seeing something from either Russell or Steven or somebody that said, publish on at least one platform one time a day. I'm like, I think we're covered. We publish on like eight platforms <laughs> seven times a day or something. And and the reason is we're looking to, to, to do the fault. Like we are, it's not for attention. It's for trust. We mm. want to build as much trust as we possibly can. And here's how we know it's working. Often we get somebody on our on a sales call, a sales interaction with one of our coaches. We don't actually have salespeople now. We just use coaches. So every one of our calls is a negative pressure call. We don't pressure people yeah. to buy. But here's what will happen all the time. One of my coaches will say something like, oh, that sounds so familiar. You're dealing with transactional management. What we do is we show transformational leadership and they'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Outcome, coach your team. You get leverage results. I've heard it on the podcast. Can you tell me a little more detail on the program? And so like... <laughs> Our, our, the people who get on sales calls with us take over the call and they yeah. direct the call. We always know we're winning when that happens. And so, wow. yeah, I don't know. If I wasn't publishing, maybe Katie would be publishing and we'd be <laughs> running the company under her as the attractive <laughs> character, but we would have to publish for somebody. Yeah. Wow. wow that's awesome. And, and I can totally relate that story because that was our call with Jeremy. Leach, we always say to people when we explain <laughs> about that call, we're like, it was a therapeutic call more than anything. Like, we finished yeah. the call, we looked at ourselves and we're like, 
Wow, I mean, there's we, work to do. That, that was like after crying too, because we were <laughs> we were so frustrated. Like it, it, the frustration, you know, came out, and just talking through it, it was amazing. And Alex, mm -hmm. you're just gonna say. You're not gonna get rid of us. We're gonna be part of your coaching <laughs> program. That, that, that's happening as yeah. soon as you know Steve's ends. We we go and transition straight into you. Uh, so you'll yeah, see more yeah. of us for sure. Uh, and Jeremy, I hope you know you're still around and and we can see you too and give you a high five. <laughs> Jeremy, you know something interesting about Jeremy. Yeah. Jeremy's no longer our salesperson. He's in the same program you guys are probably gonna join. He just Let's joined go. Foundation last week. He's starting his own business. Let's nice. go, Jeremy. So we've we've had that happen so many times where somebody works with us leaves and then comes back as a member and then grows and gro goes and grows their own business it's my favorite i love to be a ceo factory wow love it that's wow that's incredible that's so awesome well yeah. Wow. Okay. Part two at some point. Alex, <laughs> thank you so much for, for being here with us. Do not leave. You need to be part of the Hispanic goodbye. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit smash that subscribe button and follow us on social media at Beast Bros Co. That is right. And if you find this episode impactful, which I am sure you did, it was amazing. Don't forget to share it and, and leave a five-star review. Thank you. Bye, guys.